Hello everyone, welcome back to another series of Alumni Spotlight interview with me. I'm Jagjoot Kaur, the President of Biotechnology Student Society. And today we have with us Meet Ladalia. He graduated from Centennial in 2021 and currently is working at Yaya Food Corporation as a wastewater treatment plant operator. I'm really looking forward to this interview because he has experience in all the three industries, pharmaceutical, food industry, and wastewater treatment industry. So let's hear from him and his journey and how is that how it, it has been for him since then. Yes, me. I would start with first asking you how you entered the industry. How was your career path along all these years, and why did you switch from one industry to another? Because the the usual protocol is to you know stay in one industry and just you know evolve through it. Yeah. So hi everyone. My name is Meet Rodalia. And here I am, like, uh, the question, like, uh, why did I change my industry? So after graduating from biotechnology, I started working in the food industry uh, as my first job. And, like, that was the first potential job I got. It, like, uh, after graduating from biotechnology, I was looking for something to start with. So I, I started with food food company. And then uh, I went to pharmaceutical for one year. And then I switched it to environmental. So basically, what I was uh, I was doing that, like uh, in biotechnology, I studied uh, four different subjects: microbiology, environmental, food, and pharmaceuticals. So I was experimenting myself that which one is best for me. So mm -hmm. right now, in a, right now, I'm in environmental industry, and I guess this is the destination that I was waiting for. That's why I changed it. So basically, like uh, for this industry, I have uh, like you know combine all of my experience from food food and pharmaceuticals. And now currently I'm working as a wastewater treatment operator. Mm -hmm. So I have gained experience in, in sort of all of the subjects that I have learned. So that basically that is my path currently. And also I'm dealing with uh, many clients that are still working in a food, uh, food company and pharmaceuticals as well as uh, with cities and municipalities. So yes, it is a quite good experience and journey. Okay, so also give us an idea how your typical day, day at work is as a base water treatment plant operator. So in my current job, uh, the day, typical day would look like uh, we'll start with the pre-maintenance, like we have a, a we, we have a dash system. So it basically it treat it treats uh, water coming from the production uh, from a, like we are manufacturing currently different kind of drinks uh, like milks and almond milks and energy drinks and soft drink as well. So yeah, all of the wastewater coming from the production plant will receive in our you know, our tanks and everything. So we have system uh, set up already. So we'll start with pre-maintenance checks. Uh, we'll do like uh, necessary steps to start the process. And then we'll solve problems that is that is in our way and we'll deal with customers like uh, chemical and we'll receive chemical deliveries. We'll work with the health and safety. We'll work with the uh, QAs and laboratory people. So basically it's a... Uh, all rounder and roller coaster ride for all day. So dealing with different departments and working with the like so we also work with city as well. So we need to follow all the bylaws and uh, mm -hmm. regulatories provided by city. So in now like here and there we'll uh, meeting we'll set meeting with the uh, city of Toronto employees as well. So this is how it works. Okay. Um, also, I look at your LinkedIn profile and see a uh, position processing technologist at Thermo Fisher. Give us an idea how your how what your job responsibilities were during that position. So in Thermo Fisher Scientific, I was working as a processing technologist where I was in production. So currently, I am at the end of the you know let's say line of the production. So it is treatment of water. So in Thermo Fisher, I was in middle of the process. It is a production. So R and D first, and then production, and then packaging. So in production, what we were doing is like we were manufacturing uh, uh, medications for HIV, AIDS, uh, and upper body cancer, and hormonals, and, and uh, like other hormonal medications. So mm -hmm. at Thermo Fisher, we were uh, we were given the work orders and work on the medication. So basically, we were. Like in food industry, we are making milk and everything like a uh, food. So in food uh, in pharmaceutical industry, we were following all the recipes given from the R and D department. So we'll mix mm -hmm. chemicals and you know we'll follow all the process to make a tablet, and mm -hmm. we'll help towards the uh, uh, health industry. I see. Um, 
what skills have you used the most since you graduated whether it's technical or it's transferable and does uh, does a work environment also require different uh, skill sets like you work in three industries so different work environments need a different skill set or is it like the same for all the three no definitely it's a uh, different uh, skills and transferable skills required for all of the industries uh, mm -hmm. but i would say a uh, typical you know like uh, if you are working in any industry transferable skills are mostly valuable for communicating with clients so let's say te building teams working in teams and take all your any problems or working any any sort of problem so uh, transferable skills mostly i used and uh, technical skills i must say that i worked in three different uh, industries so like uh, all three industries ha are different so i i had to uh, maintain all of the uh, rules and regulations within the industry and uh, i have like uh, utilized both technical and uh, transferable skills but uh, technical skills are much more uh, you know like difficult to ex uh, gain experience and maintain yourself within the industry because you're like a uh, the research and development are always in the loop so there are chances to get a new technologies by end of the day today as well so we need to keep uh, ourselves informed and uh, like a, it, it's a basically it's like you know using technical skills is the most and transferable as well so basically i used both of them but uh, gaining experience and switching jobs is not easy without technical skills the do the skills that you learn in school like technical skills especially in labs that we do are they directly applied at the industry or do they do the employers look at those technical industry because you will end up anyways training for the industry and then you will gain the uh, skills right so does these uh, skills that you learn in uh, in labs work or apply directly in the industry Yes, definitely. Because you see, like we are learning many skills in uh, when we are learning in college as well. So laboratory skills are 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 used in in all of all sort of way. But uh, when the question is like uh, when we will apply for any any potential job, the employer will look on our resume that what we know and like uh, what they have to provide us as a training. But in Canada, it is really good that employers are providing all sort of training. but i would say uh, i have learned many skill in laboratory that i am using directly to the uh, industry that i am working right now can you name so one of some of them it is like a win win situation for both if you know your uh, laboratory skills and everything that you have learned in the in college and you are apply, applying that particular skills directly to the to the uh, working environment so that is a good thing and all, employer will 100% look that uh, you know you know what you are doing so it's not like uh, they'll just hire you and train you so basically you have to learn first and then practical you can apply so what's the usual training period for in the industries so uh, in the industries i would say i i have worked in three different so industries so uh, first i have worked as a quality assurance technician and technologist so for quality assurance there are uh, i would say less uh, like a uh, pr practical skills the quality assurance they are using more short sort of transferable skills to maintain data and logs and uh, communicating with uh, clients so there is only one one month i would say and for pharmaceutical or any laboratory industry i would say they, they'll train you for at least 3 months because you have to work with uh, chemicals that mm -hmm. are highly uh, endangered and also uh, you are you are working with uh, someone's life in in pharmaceutical yes. industry mm -hmm. so basically they you, they they'll see on resume that you are you have this skills but they'll uh, they'll groom you that uh, you are, they know like you are you know something but they'll give more information in that what they have in product and everything and also currently i'm working as a waste water treatment operator so that is uh, i would say more technical job than the documentation so it's like a engineering job so they we are under training for at least 6 months to get no mm -hmm. get to know about all the systems and everything because it is very crucial that if we made any mistake that uh, the the danger is uh, you can hurt yourself as well while working on any equipment mm -hmm. so it's kind of uh, depend like uh, in which industry you are going and uh, like how much experience you have so basically the training period would be like within 1 month to 3 months um also i'm curious whether during the training period you get paid for it or it's just that you're just putting in your time and gaining the experience definitely you're getting paid for that because it's not like a, you know any part time job it is a full time mm -hmm. job and and 
it all depends on your collective agreement so whenever students are getting a new potential job they they should always look for their collective agreements and uh, read through it that uh, what the what employer have mentioned and what is the rules and regulations and also in uh, in ontario it is it is been uh, i don't know how long but it is a law that uh, employer needs to be needs to pay for their employees for the training as well okay um how did you land on your first job was it was it through like applying to job posting then i know that's a very tedious uh, process or was it through a co-op position no it it was not a co-op so uh, in my last semester i was uh, i already started applying job before i started my last semester in january mm-hmm. 2021 so mm-hmm. i was uh, looking for the potential job opportunities and industry and i was uh, researching about the industries like which, which is best for me so at the middle of the semester i got i started getting uh, getting interviews and it was in pharmaceutical interview, interviews first and then i i thought that this is something that it is it will it, it will get hard after like you know graduating because they in pharmaceutical industries they wanted me to start immediately but i was not available at mm-hmm. the time and because i i, I had uh, like three four interviews in middle of the semester i knew like what hr and uh, employers for they are they are asking for so i was preparing myself and also i started my uh, building uh, started building my linkedin profile and mm-hmm. reaching out to uh, professionals like uh, what is the potential career opportunities for a biotechnology graduate so my first job was uh, by the linkedin and I, it, it was it was not a job posting i messaged uh, a director of quality assurance directly that i am looking for a job and this is my resume resume and uh, if you have anything just let me know so after one month he came up to uh, position that yes it is a potential position and but it was not directly hired uh, i went through three interview processes and then mm-hmm. i got selected for that i see uh, that shows that you worked hard and you were continuously like uh, reaching out to people so here we yeah. see a communication skill that you used uh, yes. here right um did, did any of your colleagues had co-op and now i see that you don't have co-op so were your journeys different do you think the people who had co-op uh, had a easier path to enter the industry so if we compare uh, students with with co-op and without co-op i would say definitely as yes. co-op students they have uh, chances to get in industry easier than the without co-op student but it at the same time it depends on student as well like if uh, if they know they don't have any co-op uh, opportunities so i would suggest them like uh, definitely you should uh, learn by yourself what what these industries are and one more thing i should mention is uh, in biotechnology course like uh, we are generally we are uh, learning subject like uh, environmental microbiology and everything but there is no such uh, subject that that will teach you in the real real world what's going on so mm-hmm. you have to be by yourself alone and without co-op students they they have uh, chances as well it's not like you, you don't have co-op and you will not get a job it's not like that so for without co-op student i would suggest to reach out linkedin profiles and build communication so networking is a crucial in communication and building connections so building connections attending industry events uh, like conference there are many free conferences around the uh, gta and uh, job fairs uh, it, it depends like uh, you are graduate already graduated or not but i would suggest to go to job fair even if you are not graduated just to, just to make sure that which companies are hiring and for which positions and what is uh, suitable for you so without co-op students should like uh, learn by themselves and also if you don't have co-op in sentinel college I, i have experienced that thing like just go to any any co-op leader and ask them like uh, if they have any potential uh, opportunity available because uh, i i was in touch with uh, other uh, other students that i worked with laboratory so one of them said that uh, he didn't have the co-op but he contacted uh, like a uh, the uh, alumni and other uh, co-op leaders so one of them helped help him so it's not like if you don't have co-op and you are not uh, reaching out them so you should reach out them as well and building uh, building connections is also that so you'll get the job you know, when you say co-op leader do you mean co-op employers co-op employers as well as uh, any you know like a co-op representative in college like let's say if oh, you are advisor any, okay advisor mm-hmm. yes Yes. Okay. Um, my next question would be: Was there any skill that you learned during industry? 
but you wish you already was you were already working on it when you were studying yes yeah, so there are few skills uh, like, like as i say like we are studying subjects only in the college so mm-hmm. uh, in college like we have uh, all the practical skills for the transferable skills we have only few subjects uh, let's say if uh, we are all dependable on uh, transferable skills only only from the assignments uh, mm-hmm. when i say assignments like uh, we are making any assi- make an assignments or any project so we'll contact particular people and we'll communicate with them so we need to get the skill to the next level and communicate with other people outside the box like uh, outside the industry whoever is working in the industry just reach out to them don't be shy on any any sort of uh, if you have an email just email them if you have a contact number just message them and call them so uh, in college i i would definitely like i i had to be focused more on the uh, building communication i was shy uh, and i never contacted any professor in college even if i have problem so i i, I was just uh, looking for a potential uh, like solutions on online so communication uh, i would say and then second thing would be the real life ex- uh, real real life corporate experience so for a co-op student it is, it is easier to get uh, experience and exposure of the corporate industry while they are studying so basically in their summer break they will just do co-op and they'll get to know that what is the industry work uh, how it works and then for a without co-op student they don't know like what is the real uh, real corporate world so in college there, there should be uh, seminars or conference or any sort of uh, you know like a session that uh, they that, that can demonstrate like what is the real world corporate situation so applying to the job how how can you make a presentation for the meetings and uh, mm-hmm. how can express yourself so uh, i would say learning more transferable skills in college it is uh, more easier to get a job after the graduation yeah because i see i read your emails your emails are so well written um, how did you gain that uh, skill like was it just naturally throughout the work experience or do you like on you were working on it consciously yeah. yeah so the thing is like uh, when i started my first job i was emailing uh, as a you know beginner so my uh, my manager and my supervisor helped me a lot with that uh, mm-hmm. to uh, to groom my email skills and not only the email for a pres- how how should i present my uh, like any reports or any sort of uh, communication to clients because it's not like that you are working in laboratory and you will not talk to anyone outside the box but you ha- you you will get chances to talk with customers you will get chances to work uh, work with uh, contractors and other you know like uh, people that are not working in your organization so people around me help me a lot and i am very thankful for them so this is how i came through um was i'm sure you didn't have a very easy journey throughout your career what were your, what were the challenges that you faced throughout the years i would say uh, there are few few of them and the common ones are dealing with tight deadlines and uh, changing industry landscape so when i say mm-hmm. changing industry landscape would be like right now it it, it is a recession time everyone knows so uh, in this uh, tough situations and times like uh, like if i want to change the job so or mm-hmm. let's say if i am getting laid laid over or anything like that i lose job so this kind of uh, this kind of uh, situations are very uh, you know like a i would say depre- de- depression uh, depression and also the the other things uh, that i have uh, went through is uh, challenging myself that i don't know like uh, the skills i don't know in re- uh, in the industry so i would say if i if i know some of, some sort of experiments like tests and everything but i am not familiar with other tests like for chemical or any other thing so i need to keep myself updated and uh, with changing industries and also changing the all sort all sort of technologies that has been growing nowadays so for an example open ai nowadays like a chat gpt mm-hmm. so that is really uh, you know new thing for all of them especially for students like a uh, in my linkedin i have seen messages that how should i groom my resume and everything so this kind of uh, day to day life and updates uh, that it is very hard to uh, get over like right? you have to be on point and you have to be you can there is no uh, way you can stop yourself by learning yeah you talked about growing uh, and building your resume 
um and because you are in the field currently what skills the employers are looking for in what ways the students can uh, gain that skill especially in terms of training programs or maybe certification that you think students should start working on while they are in college so that when they apply for their jobs when they graduate they have these certain skill sets uh, via the certification or training period or training program that they can go through any any certificate that you think students should like start working on getting yes there are many certificates and i i, I have this line that uh, canada is a land of certificates after you graduate <laughs> so uh, if you have certificate and and you mentioned in your resume that is really easy to get your uh, get your job so starting with when you are studying just get your cpr uh, uh, first aid cpr uh, certification that is very basic and you can use them uh, in all of the industries and if i talk about particular industries like food uh, food companies then uh, you should go with the hasap and other laboratory certificates like sqf and everything and uh, sigma uh, six sigma belts and for other industries pharmaceuticals uh, you can go with auditor certificates like uh, first of all you have to uh, make yourself comfortable with this industry like uh, let's say what you like uh, and and you need to find that so if you like food industry then go for food industry and look for the certificates available for the beginners so basically look for the industry that you like to work in to find the field that is uh, suits best for you and then I work on the certificates so food industry there are few certificates like uh, hasap as i mentioned hasap and sqs and lean six sigma and then for pharmaceuticals they have uh, internal auditors and for qas they have like a it's not a is similar to sqf and for in environmental industry uh, right now i'm working in uh, water treatment so environmental industry they have eit environmental uh, professional in training and engineering training and also operator in training that is for uh, wastewater treatment so mm -hmm. there are many certificates but first of all you have to find yourself uh, in which which field is suit for uh, suits for you so and then you can go for it so the certificate that you have uh, did you uh, gain them during you were working or before you started applying for jobs like how so, did it work for you in, uh, first first of all i started with food industry so i had uh, i had my cpr certificates and then uh, i i started my job as a qa in food industry and then i got my internal auditor certificates then i got my auditor certificates that uh, and by the time i was working there for one year and i got my hasap as well and i moved i switched to uh, pharmaceuticals and then by the time i moved to pharmaceuticals they accepted my internal auditors and external auditor certificates from my food industry so it was a plus point for me but for mm -hmm. environmental industry as in water treatment i, I planned my uh, interview interviews and everything before i got my certificate so i was looking for the jobs mm -hmm. and I, they you know in the job description they mentioned that you have to get this certificate before you start so this certificate will take you like one or two months to get it so i got the certificates first and then i got my job it is it, it was like that well, so do the company sponsor you any way to get these certificates if they think that you might require that skill set after the after you accepted it to the company Yes, definitely. There are lots of organizations. Uh, those will help you to get certificate. Uh, and easier is food industry. They'll just hire you for uh, for as a minimum, like a junior QA or a QA mm -hmm. technician, and then they'll provide you all sort of materials and all sort mm -hmm. of open opportunities to get certificates. And in wastewater industry, right now I'm working, so it is it is also depend on you as well because uh, particular these certificates they need to get. Uh, you know experience like a uh, government will see how much experience you have we need to complete like uh, at least 1500 to 1600 uh, working hours to get the certificate so and these certificates are very expensive as well so company will pay your uh, pay for your certificate as well and mm -hmm. if you are not working in the industry then you have to pay by yourself but as i mentioned like in some certificates uh, you have to show that you have worked in the industry and you have a uh, proper experience so it's also depend on your which industry you are working with also any secret code that you have for good resumes anything that you should you think it's a must on a resume and students should pay pay attention to it so there are no secret recipe <laughs> so basically <laughs> what what i do is i tailor my resume according to the job specification mm -hmm. it's not like i have a master resume some people like that that they have one uh, one resume that will suit uh, that will like you know 
suits for all of the positions but i don't like that so there is no master resume i, I will i will tailor my resume according to the uh, re- job description and mm-hmm. so basically you have to put all of the key points and keywords from the job descriptions to your resume it's not like we are faking it it's like a, you you already have the experience but the word uh, you know like uh, hrs are really not not looking for your your resume manually they'll just uh, mm-hmm. put your resume in the system and the system will match uh, your resume to the your job description and then we'll decide that you are eligible or not in some some cases obviously mm-hmm. so keywords are must like uh, you have to put keywords from job description to your uh, resume and make cover letters because i have seen people applying for jobs without cover letters and not expressing themselves uh, properly that why should they need to apply and why why they want this job and why they want to work with the organization so mm-hmm. express yourself uh, totally in or in cover letter that uh, you need the job in you need this job and why you are applying for and then definitely work on your resume every time that you apply for a job my last question to you would be any advice that you have for the graduates yes there are many advices so basically when i was uh, studying and i i had uh, interviews with the uh, with the companies like apotex and other cmex and everyone so i was in the middle of my like you know what i can say like middle of semester and i i was i have an example like i was uh, giving an interview in front of the library at uh, at morning sand campus so one of my uh, laboratory partner he was like oh, whom to whom you are talking to i was like i'm giving an interview so that person said like uh, we are not graduated yet so why you are applying for jobs and why you are giving interviews so i mm-hmm. said okay we are, we should not uh, any student should not wait until they graduate they they need to start working uh, beforehand so i would suggest uh, in your last semester and of course based on your ability as well so in your last semester from first month you can start so four months for the semester so first month you can start for looking industry that you like and mm-hmm. after that uh, on second month you can see like what kind of roles you have in the industry available for a uh, experience or if you are experienced then go for experienced roles and if you are a beginner or I have freshmen so you can you can look for that and third month start applying for the jobs and work your own resume so by the time you are you are in your final exams you will get uh, you will get starting interviews or any any sort of hr calls for a preliminary reviews or anything like that so work beforehand and there is uh, no minimum time to get uh, apply for a job like don't wait until you graduate start beforehand and work with the industry and you'll definitely get success and also building communication is very and building communica- communication and network is very crucial in to find the job so don't be shy and just uh, reach out to to the person like you you want to get information from and i have seen like a uh, people uh, like they don't like to learn from younger ones so let's say i am i am in i am mid senior position but uh, if i see someone in junior i i like okay Uh, this guy is junior from me i should not learn from him it's not like that just put your uh, you know self esteem and learn from them as well so you'll get uh, information that you don't know in current industry mm-hmm. so open your open your uh, you know learning communication skills and everything like open the all windows that you can learn from that's basically yeah, so be open to every opportunity and don't like yeah. box yourself uh, yes. yeah and then build your communication reach out I think that's the that's summary right. that I am taking out of out of this conversation. Uh thank yeah. you me so much for your time. I really grateful that I got this opportunity to interview you. I've learned so much from you today and I I'm very sure the students who will be watching this video will will say the same. Thank you again and have a great day. Thank you very much for the opportunity and yes if if students are watching reach out to the LinkedIn and we'll definitely help you in all possible ways.